Hello everybody, CVM here, joined by BBD. BBD for yeah. another versus video deck tech. This time we do have some awesome new cons of Tarkir cards. So we're playing with the Blue new Kronos, standard. Storm of Dragon. <laughs> so as, yeah. for those of you that have been watching me play over the last year or so, I'm no stranger to Storm of Dragon and Polukronos. Uh, but the rest of the deck is a little bit different. So uh, I've primarily been focusing on Jun monsters for the last six months or so. But now we can't really play Jund because all the black removal spells are gone. And so what I'm looking to now is Temur. So red, blue, green um, is the wedge uh, that we're looking at here. And it's primarily because of one card, and that is Savage Knuckleblade. Yep. So he is uh, very, very under-costed for his abilities. So he's a, a three-mana 4-4. Four, four, that you can pump, bounce, or give haste. So he just does everything that you need him to do. And so the goal here is to just try and get him in play as early as possible and pummel our, pummel our opponents with him. So n along the lines of a normal monsters type deck, we do have Elvish Mystic um, and a Sylvan Caryatid, but I've opted to play Rattleclaw Mystic instead of a full four Sylvan Caryatids. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure if it's going to be better than Karyatid. I imagine it'll be better against the control decks and worse against the aggressive decks. But just that we have the flexibility to morph him um, and then generate generate mana when we unmorph him, I think is going to be really cool. So I can picture sometimes where I play him face down on turn three, and then on turn four my land comes into play tapped, but I can still morph him and be able to play a five mana spell. So, you know, I'm hoping that it works out in the end, but we're, we're just going to find out. I think that he will end up being better than Sylvan Caryatid in this style of the deck. Good. Now we still have Polukronos, Stormbreath Dragon, Corsair of Crufix. Now recently I've switched the Corsairs out of my Jun Monsters deck uh, in Old Standard for Goblin Rabble Master, but I feel like in this type of deck I'm going to want to have Corsair of Crufix. Main reason being Mana Confluence. Mm -hmm. So because Savage Knuckleblade is so powerful and I want to try and cast him on turn two as often as possible, I have to play Mana Confluence, which ends up meaning that I also have to play Corsair instead of Rebel Master. Yeah, and also you have five, you have eight five drops in your deck, mm -hmm. so you want to hit your land drops. Exactly. Now those eight five drops we have are Stormbreath Dragon and Sarkon the Dragon Speaker, which is kind of like Stormbreath Dragon. Uh, it's a new card. It allows us to Stormbreath Dragon them or Flame Tongue Cavalier Creature, or make an emblem that does some stuff with drawing cards. Probably not going to use it very often, but you might. Who knows? Yep. The fact that you have the option is important. Now, the last two cards in the deck um, are some cards that are maybe a little off people's radar. Uh, I've heard some mixed opinions on Temer Charm, but I actually like it quite a bit. So uh, three mana, uh, you get one of three different things, all of which aren't you know mind-blowing things, but they can be very good in the right situation. So the first one is plus one, plus one to a creature and fight, uh, which at instant speed is going to be awesome, uh, considering I have giant monsters like Plukronos and Savage Knuckleblade uh, to be able to kill opposing monsters. Uh, the second ability is I can just mana leak. Yep. So this type of, type of deck hasn't had access to something like that before, because uh, you, you really didn't want it because Supreme Verdict couldn't be countered. Yeah. But now the Wrath of God costs five mana and can be countered, so I think we're going to be using it a lot more than people think we will. Yeah, I, I actually think that, that this is the best charm we've seen so far. Um, may, maybe not the best, but it's definitely up there. I think it's very good, extremely good, and yeah, I don't know. I think I think it will be see a lot of playing standard. Right? Yeah, and then the last one makes it so that creatures the power three or less can't block. So this is how I picture standard happening. You are a Corsair Crufix world without Mizium Mortars. So they're just going to be a bunch of little retarded creatures in play all the time, just standing there looking at each other and not being able to attack. Mystics, Karyatids, Xenagos Satyrs, and then you just play Terra Charm, they can't block, and they're dead. Yep. So th I imagine that's going to happen quite a bit. Or they cast Elspeth, make three soldiers, they can't block, and they're dead. Exactly. Um, and then we have two Crater's Claws. So. I, this card was initially off my radar, uh, but Patrick Chapin talked about it in his last article um, where he talked about a rug deck, and I actually really liked some of the things that he had to say. Uh, you know, you can use it to kill, you know, random X1s early, Soldier of the Pantheon, uh, you know, things Elvish Mystic. Elvish Mystic, things of that nature. But then once you get into the mid-game, the Ferocious on it's going to be very, very potent. So we have Savage Knuckleblade, Pelucranos, Stormbreath Dragon, Sarkin, that we can use to actually 
you know, make sure we have a 4-4 creature. And the plus 2 damage on the Ferocious is going to be pretty sweet when we can, you know, only have to spend 4 mana and we'll be able to do 6 damage to a creature, or 3 mana to do 5 damage to a creature. It definitely gets us to a point in like the green mid-range mirrors that we will be able to double spell against our opponents while getting rid of one of their creatures, which will give us a big tempo advantage. Yeah, I mean, it's actually a little bit more than that. It's, you know, 3 mana to do 4 damage, but yeah. not, not, not 3 to 5, but... Oh, it's X plus 2. Yeah, but you have to pay red and X. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it'd be f f 4 mana for 5 damage. Yeah, you do 1 more damage than the amount of mana you spend for it. Yeah, yeah. which is a pretty good rate. It is a good rate, <laughs> yeah. So th this is the main deck. Um, I'm definitely excited to try it out. Uh, as far as the lands, another one of the points of contention once we move into the new format is between the tri lands and the temples, how many do you play and what do you play? Yeah. Uh, so with this deck, because I have Tamar Charm, um, I'm going with four Bivouacs, Frontier Bivouac. Yeah. It's going to be a fun card to say for the next 18 months that it's in standard. Uh, and only two temples, whereas before normally I would just play a bunch of temples because uh, I want to have access to the blue mana so that I can cast Hammer Charm, as well as Savage Knuckle Blade. Um, so I think the temples are overrated anyway, in this style of deck. Like, uh, you're just trying to cast the cards in your hand as fast as possible. So, like, yeah. I, I think it's just better to... Have, like, the mana fixing and then go from there. Yeah, like, I think it's better to have better mana than in temples. Like, I, I, I've never really thought... I've never really liked temples that much in, in these style of decks anyway, so mm -hmm. I, I think having the bivouac is just much better. The old bivouac. Yep. I really can't say that without smiling. <laughs> Let's take a look at the sideboard and see what options we have. All right, we're here for the sideboard for the Temur Monsters deck. Uh, I have a third Xenoghost in the sideboard. I actually wanted to have four in the main, but I ended up cutting two because uh, we already have a lot of fours and fives. Uh, but the card is definitely very good against the control strategy, so we want to have access to more, at least in the sideboard. Yep. Uh, I also have a Kronos in the sideboard as well. Again, just a very good threat against the control decks. Uh, it will do, you know, allow us to k keep drawing cards. Um, you know, just three damage every turn adds up quite a bit, especially with no Sphinx's Revelation around. Yeah, definitely. And then I have two Adamant Negation. So this is a new card from Khans of Tarkir. Uh, one blue mana, it's a spell pierce for one, so it counters a non-creature spell unless they pay one. But if I control a creature with power four or greater, then it just becomes actual negate. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's better than actual negate, uh, <laughs> but I can imagine worlds where I cast Savage Knuckle Blade, leaving up one mana and get to counter a spell, and I think that is worth at least trying. Yeah, I think that the card has a huge amount of upside. Yeah. So hopefully we can take advantage of it. Uh, I do have a Back to Nature, two Reclamation Sages, and a Destructive Revelry. We're um, not interested in artifacts or enchantments surviving. Artifacts and enchantments uh, are very good, and so I like to get <laughs> rid of them. Uh, Banishing Light. Uh, so if the deck doesn't, if your opponent doesn't have Heroes Downfall, Banishing Light is like the best way for them to interact with your Planeswalkers. So having ways to get rid of those can be very important. Also, there were uh, a few random uh, heroic decks that did well. And the Pro Tour, so just having access to something like Back to Nature or Reclamation, Reclamation Sage is worth trying out, especially with something like Spectra Ward. So th that card might actually end up being playable with, you know, Fabled Hero or Hero, Hero of Iroas or whatever. Certainly not a fun card to play against and then limited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely not. Uh, then I have three Anger of the Gods and three Magma Spray, uh, just as ways to interact with our opponent uh, early on. So without cards like uh, scavenging news and the two mana removal spells that we're losing, like Mizium Mortars, that this deck would usually play. We don't really have ways to interact with our opponents before like turn three or turn two with a mana accelerant. So having access to a multitude of cards like this is going to be very good against the aggressive decks. Now it might seem weird to play Anger of the Gods on the sideboard of my Elvish Mystic Sylvan Carrieta deck. However, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, and you know those aggressive one, one and two mana red creatures uh, are worth getting rid of to slow our game plan down because they can't really beat a Polychronos if I land it with high enough life. Yeah, I mean it, it's super awkward having to play those cards in the same deck, and you know it always makes me feel like there's got to be like a better solution out there. Uh, but at the same time, you know sometimes you just have to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean maybe if if the aggressive decks are all playing X ones, you could just play Scouring Sands instead. Um, might be a valid option That's as well. the hope. I mean, in standard, I'm, I played Flames of the Firebrand yeah. uh, in, in my deck, which is basically Anger of the Gods U against the Rabble Red deck. So, unfortunately, we don't have Flames anymore. Chandra left her Flames at home. 
So we have a new one. We have Stoke the Flames instead. So I'm trying out one of the Stoke the Flames here. Um, without a way to just deal four or more damage to a creature, I feel like that we just don't have a lot of ways to kill Corsair Crufix that are also um, convenient as we move forward. So I just wanted to try out a Stoke the Flames on the sideboard just to see how it works out. Um, I can imagine worlds where I want it to be able to kill uh, Corsair, but it also kills Savage Knuckleblade in the mirror, which is probably going to happen because that card's real good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stoke's a good answer to those cards. Um, Team or Charm also a really good answer to those cards as well. If you have a big guy yourself. Yeah, if you have a big guy yourself, that's the that's the trick. So here's the sideboard. Uh, I'm definitely excited to jump in and see how these games play out. Some of the new cards look very awesome. Um, I'm especially excited to see how Sarkin plays, as well as uh, to see how the the dynamic of the games work out with a five mana Wrath of God. Yeah. Since we really haven't had, you know, exposure to that in two years. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad you don't have any bestow creatures. Too bad.